Nikki. Well, good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're here to worship. Yeah. We're, we're here to do a couple of, actually, we're here to worship, but there's things going on today. We have communion. For those of you in Christ, uh, you're most welcome to, to share the table. We also have a couple of uh, new friends of ours, brother and sisters, Steve and Nancy, that have, uh, no, you can't say no now. You're, no hesitation here. We're going to, who are today, we are, uh, today we are welcoming into the fellowship of members of this church. Amen. We may have one next week, uh, or next month too, but we'll, we'll let you know about that too. But So today is a day of celebration for a couple of extra reasons. Is there anything that we can uh, share to highlight for announcements at present? Gwen. Just in uh, Thanksgiving and celebration for Helen Thompson's birthday tomorrow. Yes. I don't know how many they are, but if you get an opportunity, give her a call, she'd appreciate that. You, okay. Uh, there's flowers that are here as well in her honor. Thank you. Uh, there's a new study coming. Dwayne, do I have it right that today the study after worship is 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 a uh, there's a new subject Philippians. Yep. Book of Philippians. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, it, I, I, it is in the Bible, so I, we got the perfect <laughs> method, so that, that's good. That's that's good. So, so after a little bit of fellowship, I head over to the library there. Is there anything else here? Well, we've got uh, one more Wednesday Lenten service, um, and then uh, this week at 6.30, and uh, also um, on Monday, Thursday, um, will be, instead of Wednesday next week, will be Thursday, so we're heading into what is commonly known as Holy Week, um, where a few extra things take place. If you haven't had the chance, maybe you don't, maybe... You know, open your Bible to take a read, you know, read through uh, from uh, John 13 and on to see what happened in the upper room. Um, but also the other text, uh, just to get a, um, a fuller, an understanding, be reminded about the last week of, of Jesus before he went to, uh, to the cross and then before he was also resurrected. We are going to have Easter breakfast on Easter morning, so come a little bit earlier. There's arrangements being made. I know there's a note here about cake mixes in the notice about Easter breakfast. I don't understand this church. It's one of these, you know, pasties I get, but cake mixes for Easter breakfast. I don't get that at all, but um, if you can use a cake mix for any reason, but perhaps for an Easter breakfast, which I think might be on the menu, they're well, you're welcome to help yourself there. So um, I'll scratch my head later if you don't, if you don't, if you, if I haven't conveyed my confusion yet. But but at least it was Easter. We are it's a day to celebrate, and you know, maybe I should have started this back in October and said, why are we saying Christ is risen in October? Yeah. So yeah. So I kick myself. Okay, I missed that. But now that you all know. We got to hold each other accountable to say Christ is risen. So, he is risen. That's right. So it's not for Easter alone. Are there any other announcements? We welcome you to um, your Easter lilies on Palm Sunday and on Easter Sunday, please. Thank you. Easter and lilies, yes. Any any uh, spring flowers in between are appreciated. Okay, thank you. I won't be coming from my garden, but if there's, because I don't do too well, so someone's got to make up for my absence, but it's time for spring flowers. Thank you. Was there another one? Oh, my. hi, Mary Beth. I don't normally speak up, and I hope I can protect my voice. I, I'm Carl's wife, and I have a Wednesday morning Bible study as a newcomer. I just want to invite all of you, as a newcomer, I felt so warm and welcome in the conversation about the over the scripture for the Sunday ahead. And I just know I was so enriched, and I spent Thursday and Friday and Saturday thinking about those conversations. Please know 
if your calendars open up or your heart moves to you from the Lord, you are in for a blessing on this unventing moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Prepare yourselves uh, so that we might worship uh, full in the Holy Spirit and uh, as the Lord leads us. <coughs> Would you uh, stand as you are able and join with me in the call to worship, Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has, great done th has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for such a picture of your redemption. Turn, if you would, um, number 72 to our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. <laughs> Jesus, be 
sing a song about great things and yet father we led recognizing and honoring you for the great things you have done lord you brought the captives back to zion and you have captured us lord and saved us in the way of christ by his blood lord on the cross we thank you father great things you have done and you are yet to do lord keep opening our eyes receive our worship lord this day Yet move in us, Lord, by the power and strength and wisdom and mercy of your Holy Spirit as we go forward. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Chapter 43, verses 16 to 21. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and the horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a whip. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals, the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. The second reading this morning is from Philippians, third chapter, verses four to 14. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, if someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Gen Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Now that I have all, not that I have already obtained all this, or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This verses 1 to 8. Jesus anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. 
Then Mary took a pint of nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later betrayed, would betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold on the, and money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, as keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in to it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that you should serve this save this perfume for the day of my burial, for you will always have a poor among you, but you will not always have me. The word of the Lord. Come on up. I should have said except you and Steve and Nancy. I don't know how many of you had a chance to interact with these two. We don't have X's on the floor, so we're just kind of winging it. We're just doing the best we can here. It's sort of like getting married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the book, and, and you, they do answer some questions that are kind of like, and I do, I will. So that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. But the Lord, uh, we're talking to them, they, they moved here over yeah. a year ago, a yeah. year and a half ago, <clears throat> and they sought the Lord. They sought the Lord for a fellowship. Yes, it helped that it was right around the corner where they lived. Um, but they wondered and they thought and they prayed and then they visited. And they, uh, they said, God wants us here. Fellowship is good. The treats are good. Um, conversation. 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 Uh, but ultimately, uh, the Lord uh, has brought uh, these two uh, wonderful believers to be a part of this church. To commit themselves in whatever way. We've already seen one of them in the kitchen. <laughs> and uh, we've already seen both of them intentionally sitting down and talking with others. So who knows how God might yet bless them and yet also bless the church to which they want to be a part of. So thank you. Thank you, God. Yeah. <clears throat> The church is the body of Christ, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. It is the household of God and the fellowship of believers. <clears throat> As a Christian congregation, we are one expression of the great family of God, which Jesus Christ is building yet. And we rejoice now as the local family is made stronger by this brother and sister who join us in receiving God's love and in cultivating our love for him, for our fellow believers, and for the world. As these friends affirm their faith and commitment, let us also renew, thinking of what I'm going to be asking them, maybe you in your own hearts and minds, while you're witnessing their confession, might also be a time for you to say yes or I will as well in your hearts. But let us renew our promises of faithfulness to God and to one another. Since here, I'm supposed to say, we thank God for you. Ah, well, we thank God for you. We sincerely do. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, he has made you part of his universal church and has led you to unite with this congregation. And now I call on you to affirm your faith in the presence of God and dear brothers and sisters. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and promise to follow him as Lord? I do. Yeah. You have made public confession of your faith and have been baptized. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures, the Old and New Testaments, as the Word of God and the only perfect rule for faith, doctrine, and conduct? I do. Do you intend to live among God's faithful people, to hear His Word and share in His suffering, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do. Do you promise to support the ministries of this church? We do. Well, we, the members of this congregation, now welcome you with joy into our church family 
And we pledge to you, I'm speaking for you folks, we pledge to you our love and support, our friendship and prayers, so that together we may continue to grow in the knowledge and the love of God. Members of this congregation, do you receive these believers into your fellowship and your care? And if so, will you answer, we do? We do. As an expression of our welcome and token of our love, I offer you the right to remember our fellowship. Let us hear the words of scripture concerning the gift and obligations of our life together in Christ and his church. From Romans 12. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Never flag in zeal. Be aglow with the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Heavenly Father, we join together and we give thanks, Lord, for confirming your work of love, your, your work of your ministry, Lord, in our lives that brings us to salvation and continues to grow your church, your kingdom. We thank you that Jesus is our head. We thank you, Lord, that he has obligated himself to build his church. Even so, Lord, that the gates of Hades will not prevail. We thank you, Lord, for the strength he provides, the wisdom, and the power, Lord, to do all things according to his name. And we thank you, Lord, that for Steve and Nancy and for this church that they have joined. We thank you for them, Father. And working in their lives, may they, Lord, may they continue to find themselves according to your will with joy and hope and fervor. And may, Lord, what you have done today bring blessing to this fellowship and continue to raise and honor the name of Jesus Christ. We pray this in his blessed name and all of his people said, Amen. Amen. follow this wonderful thing with another wonderful event in our service. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let's hope it's wonderful. <laughs> Jamie and I are going to sing a song called Jesus Messiah. Beautiful Easter season song. And uh, got a little snapshot when you two were welcomed just a moment ago, and the church applauded it, of what happens in heaven when one sinner repents. All heaven rejoices. And um, that's so important to remember who we are and why we're here. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, there, there's a, a lot of words in this song. It's a beautiful chorus. The one that really sticks out to me this morning. And that is, when Christ died, the veil in the temple, and this is all they had known, this was their spiritual ritual, the, the temple, everything in that and their world revolved around the temple. When he died, the veil, the barrier that only the high priest could go through once a year as a potential offering for the atonement of their sins was torn top, bottom to top, actually, I think the Bible says. Top to bottom. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's wonderful. It wasn't sideways. That was it. 
It was finished. The ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And we now can do what? Not just the high priest can enter into the holiest of holies. We can come. We have access. And I'm so thankful, so thankful this morning. Worship with us as we, we do our best. That's a high one. <laughs> <laughs> He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross, love so amazing. Love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name of all the names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. Sinner, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, His body of bread. His blood of ours, the King and Lord, and all for now. The whole earth trembled, and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so Jesus Messiah, his name, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. The ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, all our hope is in you. Messiah, 
Sometimes you just gotta let some things soak. Maybe more often than we realize, but uh, please God, keep it. <clears throat> Let's join together in <clears throat> our worship. Uh, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. Would our sisters come forward to receive this morning's tithes and offerings? <laughs> justice and grace and mercy. Lord, we give ourselves to you. Take what we have provided, Lord, what we've given, and do your good work, Lord, and bring glory and honor to your name, even through this church. Lord. Amen. Amen. Is there thanksgiving in your hearts this morning? Is there thanksgiving? Praise you. Thanksgiving for a wonderful day celebrating my sister's birthday. Amen. I had a lot of fun with uh, traditional hymns this week. So I am thankful for all of the inspired writers of the old traditional hymns. In particular, William Runyon 
who wrote, who uh, was inspired to write Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Mm -hmm. You had to take a class in hymnology. It's, yeah, you, yeah. Well, and, and did you know there was such a thing as hymnology? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. But uh, it's interesting, but the, the language and the theology is amazing. When it continues to drive home as far as the message. Thanksgiving. Or uh, it's, that's right, it had the anniversary today. Thank you. Thanksgiving for my husband uh, on April 4th will be his birthday. Actually, seven, uh, uh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago tomorrow. The two of us are for him, 11, 12, 15, and 11. Thank you. 10 years in heaven tomorrow. Oh, the fourth. That's yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. With Thanksgiving for all who volunteered their time and talent to make our services work each Sunday. Mm -hmm. Amen. We thank you for the beautiful music this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, I want to thank you for the uh, additional beautiful music besides what we uh, and, and Jamie, I got to hear a little bit more volume today. <laughs> and it could be that my ears are, are better. Yeah, I you know, but I just I had to stand back and just delight. And I know the Lord's taking delight in what you offer him, but I, I borrowed some of that as well. Is there anyone we could be praying for? I'm thankful for the time I had with Tom Cassini. Oh. Where he wanted to reminisce about Boulder Junction, to read the scriptures for the week that was ahead, and then to pray together. And it was good to spend that time. The only problem was my faith to come a lot to see him in the last place. Yeah. Thank you. But a bright spot in his life. Let's continue to remember the refugees in Ukraine and their lives that are devastated from the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And for the Mary Mother of Yeah. Pardon? For our pastors and teachers and missionaries around the world for their help and for their safety. For Bruce and Shirley, Mary Mother. For our future pastor, who we don't know yet. God knows. God knows. Yes. For God's presence in the world, bringing sunshine even to the darkest corners, and that this uh, following week he will be ever present in the lives that are feeling depressed. Thank you. Prayers for a situation when plans change unexpectedly and um, you're taken on a different path and that the Lord would be with families. Mm. Yes. yes. Thank you. Pastor, can we pray for those lives that were devastated? In our midst that are affected by addiction to, to drugs and alcohol, and the families that are destroyed. Yeah. Thank you. We have uh, much to pray for. As a body of believers, this is what we're going to do. This is what we do. We turn to the Lord. We have Thanksgiving. There's no doubt about it. But there's so many things, so many things to, to petition him for, to seek his help for. From what is home and dear to us, to those uh, lives that are around the world, we can't name. But we know something awful is happening in many people's lives. 
there's a lot, friends, and I, I'm going to need your help again this morning. So let's get together. Lord, we bow our heads before you and we say thank you and we also say help. It's only because, Lord, that the veil was torn that we have this, it's such a simple word, access, Lord. We have an avenue that was not provided ever before. We have Lord Jesus Christ who has given us love, life and through his love. Yeah, it cost him his own. But it's one thing that he did as he pursued the cross. He did it with joy because he knew what he was going to complete. And we are benefactors, Lord. And in turn, may we, Father, act in the same way as Jesus toward others who also can benefit from you. Lord, there's a lot this morning. Give heed to our prayers, Lord. Give heed to our prayers. Heavenly Father, thank you for the celebrations that <clears throat> we can mark, Lord, milestones or whatever events, Lord, whatever years of uh, on this earth, Lord, years of marriage, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we can look back, not to dig up anything necessarily, but to recognize and know things both good, and I suppose, and bad, but Father, for those things which have brought us joy and which started us on journeys we never would have imagined. Thank you for those who uh, are, have gone before us in heaven, Lord, and we can mark those days like Noella and her husband. And there might be others, Lord, that come to mind and we can name dates. We thank you, Lord, for the lives and yet for their salvation they now know fully. We thank you for your holy word, Lord. There's nothing that can, nothing that can replace your word. Oh, that we might become more familiar with it. But yet, Father, thank you for those hymn writers and others, po poets, Lord, and who have scoured the, the word and have been impressed by you, Lord, to paint some picture, to paint some, some understanding and we are benefit, uh, we benefit from them, Lord, and their inspiration from you. So I pray, Father, that we recognize that we rest on the shoulders of others, and yet we rest on the, sh the gifts of others as well, Lord, from time past. Thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you that we can spend time with one another, like uh, Pastor Bob and Tom, that comes to mind now, but Father, for the times you give us, Lord, when we talk life, and that talk is centered on you. Thank you, Father, for those who serve your church. Let us never be the ones to forget that serving in love and in truth and in care for one another is before any kind of details we've got to take care of. But thank you, Father. Lord, we pray for those who need help today and in the days to come. Lord, for Marion and Arnie and Marilyn and for Helen and for Mary, for Larry, Father, thank you. Thank you for the strength that returns. For Missy, Lord, Lord, help her that her headaches would end. Lord, heal her body. Heal her body, Father. We also pray, Lord, for your comfort and direction for Tom's and Pat's families, Lord. We've got Jim here, Father. We've got friends that have known Tom. Lord, bring comfort and strength and understanding to them. For Bruce, Lord, heading for tests. For Brent's dad, Lord, that's heading for surgery. Oh, that your love would be known in the world and people would see and not take for granted. Lord, thank you for guiding us that even when changes of plans come to our lives, plans, the changes we don't want, but Father, 
Can we entrust these things and find you, your presence in all of our steps? Thank you, Lord, that we can offer up ourselves and those we know who have been affected by the evil, Lord, when it comes to alcohol and drugs. Lord, it's not, it's, evil is not kind at all, Lord. And it will take hold, Lord, of someone's life. And it's, it's awful, Lord. Help, uh, if there's any, if, however you might do it, Lord, from the top down, in families, Lord, that you, Lord, would be the guide and help, Lord, to pull back, help to pull back the, the effect, the power of evil in this area, Lord. We need help in our country, Lord, with our laws and those who do these crimes and drugs and alcohol and promote things like this. But we need help, Father. And that makes me be reminded, Lord, I wanted to pray, Lord. I'm not praying for our government necessarily. I'm not praying because I'm concerned politically, Lord. I'm concerned because of our issues are spiritual, not political. And we need a renovation, if not a complete wiping out and undoing and a redoing. And it doesn't, it's politics isn't the issue. Father, we need righteousness. We need, we need Lord, a uh, respect for law. We don't have it in our hearts as a country in many ways. We need things, Lord, to be uncovered where, it is, where there's corruption. And we need, Father, our leaders to whatever party, Father, to act on righteousness and truth in the things, Lord, which you present that are good for society. Lord, we need help. We need defense against the dangers in this world. The path that you lead us on, Lord, we need to have it lit brightly so that we do not stray from it or fall off of it. We need you, Lord. Those there are, there are many around this world that are suffering, Lord. We see what's going on, some in Ukraine. We see what's going on in our border. And we are overwhelmed here in this country. But, Father, there's innocent people who are getting hurt, who are being abused and violated and killed. Take hold of them, Father. Stop the forces of evil. Bring good to bear, Lord, in this love, that, in this world that you have. <laughs> Father, also for this church in the days ahead, um, there's going to be a transition, Lord, in this church. We don't know when or with whom as the next pastor, but Prepare us. Prepare the pastor and family. Let there be a let there be clarity, clarity, Lord, for this future pastor and this church. That there would be a uniting that affirms and confirms, Lord, <coughs> your hand in all things. Guide conversations. Guide the decisions, Lord. Let there be decisions aimed at excellence, aimed at faith above all in Jesus Christ, aimed at hope, aimed at wisdom, aimed at understanding. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we offer ourselves to you. We ask for your mercy in our lives. Power, and even, Lord, power to have the interest to do what delights you and what is your will. Pray for that, Lord, for each one, for this church. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord, and yet we're not done praying because we have this wonderful prayer. Jesus taught it, and he teaches it still, Lord. Here are prayers we pray, that wonderful prayer. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, and thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus said that uh, this would be a house of prayer. This morning we turned it a little bit, we opened up the windows a little bit on that subject. So thank you. If I get that kind of response when I ask about what to pray about, just know that I'm going to be really happy the next time too. <laughs> Especially of the substance. Well, there's not going to be any break for you because we're going right into a message. And guarantee that you're going to hear a message from me that you haven't heard before. Ever as short as I made it today. Well, what do you think of that? <laughs> Some people are really delighted and they can't help but express themselves. <laughs> no, when I look at when I looked at the scriptures that we had this morning, um, I... It's like, okay, here's where I think I'm going to be going. It seems, okay, Lord, I think this is where I need it to land. So <clears throat> one more prayer. Father, this word that comes to preaching in the next few moments, put your hand on it, Lord. Manifest, Lord, truth, manifest wisdom, and influence each and every one of us. I don't, I'm not, Lord, I'm not satisfied with one or two, Lord, each Lord, may your hand rest upon each and every one of us. Like the fire did, Lord, at Pentecost. Each and every one of us look upon us, Father. We have needs, we have interests, we have desires. We are misguided. And maybe we're not misguided, but we need to be encouraged. But we need, Father, we need your hand on each one of us to move us in the way of Christ, however you do it, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The passages that were in the lectionary for today, specifically the one from Philippians 3, where Paul was writing, and then also John 12, where John was writing about Mary and her interaction with um, Joseph. So if you wanted to find your Bibles and refer to them, I'm not going to be going line by line, but you might be influenced. But here we have in between Philippians and also with John, we've got two very different passages, two written for two very different purposes with very different content centered on two very different, maybe not very, but different followers of Jesus in two different books of the Bible written by two different authors. You get where I'm going with that. But I guess we have two different stories and content, and yet I think they share, and maybe who would have guessed that they share a common theme, at least the way I saw it. I'm going to start with Philippians here, Philippians in chapter 3. And when we go to this passage in Philippians, we find that the Apostle Paul writing in this chapter as if you're in a race. His goal, looking ahead, is, is all about what he was called to do when he first trusted Jesus with his life. To live out his life in faith to and in faith for God and for his son. Everything was about Jesus. Everything. So for him, it was a race to keep doing it. And to get him there, for him to be able to run the race with nothing to hold him back, Paul, in this passage, he looks back at all of his accomplishments. Of course, he wasn't responsible for being circumcised on the eighth day, okay? But he's looking at all of his accomplishments, the family, the lineage, and all of that, and yet what he also did. Up to that point in his life, he says, all of these accomplishments, he says, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. All that was on his resume, all of his trophies that he won for God, that he had on his mantle that he used to polish before Christ, all of the possible reasons that he could have taken pride in, sets it all aside. This is what he's saying here. Puts it all away. He knows that running the race if he were to be looking back, if you, anybody ever been in a race, what happens when you turn around? What's the potential? Oh, I've done that, so I know what it's like. Maybe you haven't, but you understand. It's going to trip you up. You could fall, okay? You look back. You look back, and sometimes 
yes, there's a reason to look back, but when you look back and you're gazing at what where you come, where you have come from, and about what you did, not good, not good. And then you add one more thing. So Paul's got this direction that he's going. He's done with things in the past. He's looking ahead. And then you add one more thing. You realize where Paul is, what situation Paul is when he's writing this letter. Where is Paul when he's writing this letter? He's in prison. Put that together. He's in Roman prison for time in chains, okay? He could say, well, because of my circumstances, I can put Jesus aside. I mean, that would be a, that would be some lesser reasons. Not at all an ideal situation. He's in prison. A ton of great limitations placed on him. All of these restraints on Paul. And to Paul, it doesn't matter. His circumstances never changed who he was and what he was called to do to fulfill. Circumstances might hold us back in some way, but it doesn't hold us back. And he, he describes what his heart and his soul are focused on in this, in, these, in this passage. And twice he mentions pressing on, striving. He's after the goal of the upward call of, of what he has been given in Christ Jesus. That didn't matter where he was. It was all mattering what he was doing. The thing is, for him, Jesus Christ had taken hold of him and had given him a divine purpose. The why he was living at all. And, and the thing is, this why of living at all, what he's, all, all, what he's supposed to be all about, does involve him receiving God's love and grace and continuing to experience that. It does, if you never set that aside, you continue to have it revealed to you. It does involve walking with him as a disciple of Jesus with the power of the Holy Spirit each and every day. Wherever he is, whatever circumstances, he was committing himself to learning the heavenly values that he was introduced to. He was committed to serving the church he loves the souls that God wanted yet saved from hell and for heaven. He was committed to that. He was committed in living for honoring God and finishing the work on earth that he was given. Everything, almost like he had blunders. No excuses for Paul. No reasons, no excuses, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes excuses are our reasons, but read between the lines, however we do that. He wasn't even considering slowing down and saying, you know what, I'm getting old. I'm in a prison. Maybe I can do a little bit. No, you don't hear that. He was determined to keep his running shoes on and laced tight in the race ahead of living out his faith, faith for the one who entered his life and by his love saved him and gave him life and life abundant. That's Paul. And then you turn to Mary. I, I didn't choose these to try to have a gender kind of an issue here. But look at Mary. Look at Mary in the story. Jesus is, and his disciples and others, they've gotten together for a dinner, and it was in his honor, in a town named Bethany at the house of Jesus' friends, Lazarus, Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha and Lazarus, how are they related? Sisters and their siblings here. This is neat. And, and Lazarus, just a few, well, however recently, was also the one raised from the dead. The story in John 12 is clearly focused on Mary and her gift to Jesus, opening up and using this jar of expensive perfume to anoint Jesus' feet with her hair, which he uh, so comments. Uh, an anointing of him for his upcoming death on the cross. So very, very meaningful. And we see Mary humble like a slave girl. And even more so, because when you think about it, yes, she's on her knees like a slave girl would be at Jesus' feet. She's washing his feet, anointing his feet. 
She's not using the towel, though. She's using her own hair, which puts her on an even deeper level, in an, in an even deeper category of humility and love. And this picture is also a huge contrast to what we also read here about Judas. You've got Mary, beautiful Mary, adoring Mary, and you've got Judas. Judas in the story seems to be pretty bothered at her. John writes that he's in charge of the disciples' money bag. He's their treasurer and responsible for the money which the disciples needed to live by and also to give out to the poor as needed. But John also notes, as you might remember, that Judas is a thief, often helping himself. He's stealing along the way from that money bag. So you can probably read between the lines. He's watching Mary, all this expensive oil that she's using. What's he doing to him? And watching some of the potential money that he could have had a, a shot at keeping for himself. So he's, his jaw is dropping. I mean, for, for someone to do this in the first place, yes, he probably wanted some of it, but for someone to do this, oh my word, what's going on here? Shock. And you see his response, why wasn't this perfume so trying to be reasonable when she's trying to adore Jesus, okay? You see the contrast here? Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? A year's wages. So maybe Judas is bothered. He's so practical in one point, but maybe he's also bothered because he's losing out on this opportunity for his own gain. And yet, as I thought about it, you take a look at what Mary was doing. And so, I'm a guy. I have trouble understanding women. I admit that, okay? But I need to, st I need to stop and gaze now and then. I need to be the one who says, Let's not be so practical. Because of it. And then I thought if I were Judas and I wasn't a thief, but if I were one of the guys at the, at the table here, instead of going like this, maybe what I needed to do is wait and listen. Because I think that perhaps the men or others, practical-minded people don't under, sometimes don't understand what lavish adoration of our Jesus is. And, I, and I'm one of those guys. And so I wondered if, okay, I'm not trying to project, but is it possible that Judas, being the practical guy that he is, maybe he's bothered by how free Mary is to pour such extravagant love on Jesus. Maybe he didn't know what to do with what he was looking at. Because you look at this picture, some might say that Mary was, she went overboard. You know, you can only be so devoted, you know. You can only be so committed. You can only do so much. You got to draw the line somewhere. But there she is. And Jesus acknowledges her and says, leave her alone. She's anointing me for the bed that I need. Do you think she cares about the cost of her gift? You can say no. Do you think she cares about what others think of her? No. In her affection, her love for the Lord, she ignores the potential shaming by others. She risks humiliation, doesn't care about it really. She gives uh, of her own, of, of a, a very, very, very costly gift. She moves and, and, and acts in a way even lower than a slave. She gives greatly, friends. She lavishes greatly, friends, on Jesus. Because she loves Jesus greatly whom she knows loves her greatly. Maybe you can see, already see the similarity between Paul and Mary 
coming at it in two different ways. But I think there's a common, I think there's a common thread. I think there's something that binds these two different passages, these two different people together. I don't know if there's a word that you might use. Passion for Christ. Because he first loved Mary. He first loved Paul. They, they, there was no option in their lives. It's about devotion. Passion for Christ. Unabashed. I mean, you could be devoted to someone or something, but usually there's constraints and descriptions. Oh, he's a little bit devoted. Yeah, he has some devotion to that. Mary and Paul show us lives that, in, in the language, what it looks like, what it sounds like, that's unabashed, that's unafraid, single-minded. Passion. Devotion to Jesus above any and all other things or anyone else. There's someone, uh, you might have heard of Jonathan Edwards, Puritan preacher from the 1700s, used my, I hate the word used, but God, God uh, put him, uh, he, God raised him and others to actually help start a very incredible, great revival in America in the mid 1700s. And so I came across this, and he wrote, here he was, in his, later on in years, he was, he was a minister serving. But he also wrote, started writing when he was younger, and at the age of 18, he, he wrote this one thing. Resolve that all men should live to the glory of God. Resolve, secondly, whether or not anyone else does, I will. And that's what fashioned his life. Our response to Jesus and his love, to Jesus who died on the cross for you and me, is only single-minded, unhindered, unwavering devotion. Like Paul and like Mary, simply, simply focusing our lives, our whole being, on Jesus. Let's be a people like Paul and Mary. Let's be a people like innocent Jonathan Edwards. And like King David, we know what is said of him, after God's own heart. And so, friends, let us each and all of us, like Jonathan, be resolved that no matter what anyone else, or not whether or not anyone else does, we live our lives to the glory of God in devotion to Him, in our unwavering, unashamed devotion to our Lord and Savior, to Jesus, to our Father, who loves us with love that has no end. We have a song to sing on the 566, but keep these things in mind. It's the stories that, I mean, we learn theology, we learn doctrine. And in a sense, who would have ever thought that these two stories about devotion on Paul's part and devotion on Mary's part could teach us doctrine about how to live for Christ? It's something to think about. But we're heading into our time of communion where we, in a sense, we recount the cost to Jesus and we bless his name for his love for us, what he's done for us in knitting us together and the fellowship of, around him, in him, as the head, but also by the word and by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, I guess at this point, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to stand, it's up to you. I'm not going to, 566, Bread of Life. Oh. 
to the sacred table, brothers and sisters, not because you must, but because you may. You've been invited. Come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you his righteousness. You who desire to be his true disciples. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have any claim on the grace of God, but because in your frailty and sin you stand in constant need of his mercy and help, come not to express an opinion, but to seek his presence and pray for the Holy Spirit. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Join with me. God, thank you for paving the way, for opening our eyes, for lifting the burden, Lord, and the wages of sin, for drawing us close to you and to one another in this true bond of love. Thank you, Father, for giving us help, Lord, to recall and to put ourselves before you and to thank you again for the wonderful gift of Jesus and all that he suffered, Lord, even if it was out of joy, Lord, there was so much that he gave on our behalf because of love and on the world's behalf, Lord. We owe you our lives, Lord. May your spirit move. May your spirit come to us in a strong and powerful way, equipping us, Lord, taking worldliness out of us and giving us grace upon grace. Even now, Father, as we share in the bread and the cup, may you be blessed in our coming to you and in you, and in you Father, coming and moving in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Would our elders come forward that we might be served? Thank you. 
Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ, which is broken for you, take communion. Taking a couple of minutes to get some more.
blood of Christ, the true vine, drink all of it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. And all of his people said, Amen. Let's uh, close out our service. 429, lead on, O King Eternal. <laughs> Jesus Christ, in the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.